dear students i am dr sami siddiqui assistant professor department of english maulana azad national urdu university hyderabad i welcome you to this class of ma english first year of maulana azad national urdu university today we shall have a discussion on elements of drama the topic is prescribed in the course drama in english we shall talk about what is drama what are the elements of drama what are the devices i repeat in today's topic we are going to talk about what is drama what are the elements of drama what are the dramatic devices the first point is concerned drama is one of the forms of literature we also use the word play for drama drama is a story with dialogues and actions it is meant to be performed in front of an audience by actors who take on the roles of characters drama's full qualities are revealed when it is performed on stage drama is a collaborative work the dramatist has to work with the director producer actors dress makers musicians electricians scene painters and many others thus drama has the contribution of many individuals what are the elements of drama the important elements of drama are plot character theme and setting the first element is plot plot is the arrangement of events of a story this arrangement has a cause and effect relationship in a drama the plot is in the form of scenes and acts the typical elizabethan drama was divided into five acts each comprising a number of scenes but in a modern drama we find three acts moreover the dramatists have also experimented with one act plays so traditionally the drama used to have five acts then in the 20th century it was reduced to three acts and now we also have the type called one act plays according to the type of drama the plot may vary sometimes it has a single main plot but depending on the demands of the theme and the nature of drama it can also have sub plots Let's talk about the plot construction. A plot has a beginning and rise of action, conflict, climax, fall of action and end. A plot begins with some event and leads to the next event and so on. As I have already told you, these events have a cause and effect relationship which means the first event causes the second event to happen and the second event is the result of the first event then the plot 
often contains details of conflict or tension. This tension exists between the characters. When the conflict reaches its highest point, it is called climax. After climax, we see a fall of action. When the conflict comes to an end, it is called resolution. And finally, the drama comes to an end. After plot, we have character as the second most important element of drama. A drama deals with people and their actions. These people are called as characters. These characters may be humans as well as non-humans. Among the non-humans, we can have the example of animals and supernatural figures acting as the characters of a drama. The way a writer describes these characters is known as characterization. As a student, when we are studying a character, we should consider the physical appearance, dress, behavior, expressions, speech, relation with others, manners, names and even nicknames of the characters. All these aspects help us in understanding a character in a better way. In a drama, the actors present the characters. So their personality also gets involved in the characterization. The costumes and makeups also help in portraying the characters. In addition, we learn more about the characters by what they say and what others say about them. Now let's discuss certain classifications of characters. The characters who change with the development of plot are known as round characters. I repeat, the characters who change with the development of plot are known as round characters. The characters who do not change with the development of plot and remain same throughout the story are known as flat characters. Among the characters, someone may be most important around whom the action of the story revolves. Such a character is called hero, heroine or protagonist of a play. This protagonist is usually in conflict with another character who is known as antagonist or the villain. The characters around whom the action of the play revolves are called as major characters. Apart from them, many minor characters also contribute to the development of plot. We can also have one more classification of characters as types and individuals. Types or typified characters represent a class and they are typical. They do not change. They are generally the minor characters. Individuals are opposite of the types. They are complex and they generally come from the major characters. Thus, we have discussed three classifications of characters. One is types and individuals, major and minor characters, and round and flat characters. The next element of drama is theme. Theme is the idea on which a literary work is based. In other words, it is the subject of a play. A play may have more than one subject. A play may be based on more than one ideas. Then we say that it has multiplicity of themes, which means it has more than one themes. The dramatist may use certain symbols and motives to convey these themes. 
motives are the recurring structures, images and contrasts in a play, whereas symbols are objects, characters, figures, colors which are used to represent certain abstract ideas or concepts. These symbols and motives help the dramatist in conveying the theme in a better way. The next important element of drama is setting. Setting is where and when the story takes place. So, it is the place and time of the events of story. Apart from the geographical and historical setting, the social setting of a play is also important. Setting affects the behavior of a character and thereby the action of a play. Setting has a correlation with the theme of a play. It also affects the diction. In a drama, setting is shown on stage through scenery and references. The use of lights, And sounds is quite important to create a spectacle in the drama. Now, let's move on to the dramatic devices. Under this heading, we shall talk about dramatic irony, soliloquy, aside, expectation, and surprise. We shall also touch stage directions. So, the first dramatic device is dramatic irony. It is a form of contrast. Often, what is being said or done on stage has one meaning for the characters, but another meaning for spectators. This is called as dramatic irony. Now, this dramatic irony has two types. One is verbal irony, another is irony of situation. If the irony arises out of what is being said, it is called verbal irony. If it arises out of what is being done, it is called as irony of situation. So, verbal irony and irony of situation are both types of dramatic irony. The next dramatic device is soliloquy. Soliloquy is an act of speaking to oneself. It is a dramatic device. Here, the character speaks out his heart on stage when other characters are not present. So, he speaks to himself and acquaints the audience with his motives and state of mind. Soliloquy helps the audience in understanding the dilemmas, confusions and what is going on in the mind of the character. It is a very useful device in drama. Aside is close to soliloquy. In one way, it is the shortest form of soliloquy. In aside, a passing thought is uttered by a character in front of other characters, but they do not hear it. Apart from soliloquy and aside, Today, we shall also focus on expectation and surprise. Expectation and surprise are the dramatic devices related to plot construction. When all the relevant facts are disclosed at once, 
and the subsequent development of events is as per anticipation it is called expectation when a few facts are held back for some time to be sprung on the audience later the, and the interest is derived from suspense it is called surprise a dramatist should make use of both the things expectations and surprises so a drama should have anticipation as well as suspense but remember too much of expectation leads to dullness because if everything happens according to your expectation then you will lose interest in it whereas too much of surprise leads to melodrama well apart from these dramatic devices when we are reading a play we also come across stage directions given in the brackets do remember that stage directions are not a dramatic device in a script of play they represent the lines a producer has to follow in order to produce the play as per the author's intention in short what we have discussed till now is the definition and elements of drama in it we have talked about nature of plot character theme and setting among the dramatic devices we have focused on dramatic irony soliloquy aside expectation and surprise finally we have also touched what stage direction is you can read about these types of dramas from the books which you are seeing on the screen let's meet some other time with some other interesting topic till then goodbye thank you